Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Willie Schubert. I work with um, Internews Earth Journalism Network, and I know we have a short amount of time, so I'd just like to start by saying how honored I am to um, be here with all of you guys, and I really feel like I have a lot to learn. And um, I just wanted to start with a bit about who we are, since um, it might not be so clear about the Earth Journalism Network. So um, we're a global community of environmental journalists that's really focused on uh, improving the quality and quantity of environmental journalism. And we do that by connecting people uh, in different regions, uh, supplying them with tools, and training, funding. And uh, our hope is that we can do this to provide global context to local stories. So uh, just more clearly, this is who we are and where we are. We are 4,500 people uh, all throughout the world. And this is about 20% of our group organized by cities. And we also have dozens of partner organizations that work in country and region that organize things um, in their own countries, kind of local partner institutions. And just what we do in general is kind of these three main uh, activities. This is kind of our process. So we um, provide training and education through a variety of different ways. We uh, create networks of journalists uh, through online communications tools and also through funding projects and things like that or organizing projects. And then something that I'd like to talk about in this is our geojournalism uh, activities, which are really about creating uh, mapping platforms that lots of journalists can use uh, to pull resources and data into their stories. So kind of our flagship project here uh, is called Info Amazonia, launched last year at Rio Plus 20. And the basic principle behind geojournalism is that we're trying to combine data with story from a network of publications that can provide context for that, the patterns in data. And these patterns in data can also provide evidence for their stories. So here it is uh, in static form. So what, we what we're looking at is deforestation. And we've combined um, deforestation data from all nine countries of the Amazon basin uh, updated quarterly and showing 30 years of information. So you can look at this on a, a national level or you can zoom in very closely. And then on top of this, we, we're working with so far six media houses in the Amazon basin that are local organizations to essentially use these tools, search through data, geotag their stories so that when you see, like here in this example, you can see lumber um, and cattle processing with a legacy of deforestation. And then across the river, you can see where new deforestation is happening and, and what's going on uh, in real time. So as I was saying earlier, you can also zoom in. This is a, a quick map of the Belo Monte Dam project. And we were, um, there were 16 stories written about this because there's a lot of indigenous rights issues. So you can see kind of down here, there's where the indigenous lands, where the, the actual dam itself. And then we can um, distribute these stories out to groups. So here's another example of uh, mining concessions and protected areas. So we're really working on an entire basin wide. So this is forest fires. You can switch very easily between these things so that you can see correlations and things like that. And so far, we've got 700 geotag stories from all these different groups. And we've got uh, data from a whole network of, of partners. So all of this data is now open for anyone to use. So we're kind of like this hub for different people to come and, and get things uh, for their own stories. And um, we also do this through a lot of negotiation. So it's journalists as ambassadors to different NGOs and governments to work to open data and then synthesize it. So when you do this, now we have a big uh, problem of, of verification. So as you see here, we collect it, combine the satellite imagery. This is like the big, you know, from the top down kind of approach. And now we're really thinking about how we can use uh, citizen and also targeted journalists uh, for uh, verification processes and uh, validation processes. Um, and I'd like to talk a bit about what we're thinking in that regard. Uh, I won't spend too much time on it because um, a lot of the thinking is very similar to the mapping of the mangroves project that Aaron is going to talk about next. But uh, essentially, we work with lots of community radio stations as well. And we're, our hope is that we can um, integrate two-way communications so that we can um, get data back from mesh networks of sensors that are pulling in information uh, over longer distances. But uh, again, you know. We're, we're looking at the entire Amazon. So 
this is a, it's a complex, you know, this is a very complex problem and set of issues that it's going to take a lot of um, different iterations. And I think that, you know, I'd, I'd really like to stress working with a lot of like the maker communities has been really helpful for us in terms of figuring out what is really possible and what is not and trying to adapt strategies based upon, you know, huge amount of space, very different connectivity issues and what it is that's actually possible right now on a, on a big question. So I think, you know, in terms of what's going on now and what kind of makes us a bit unique because we have all of these organizations and then we're also creating these platforms is we've aggregated it and now the new thing is how do you disaggregate this information and send it out and integrate it into the work of all these publication houses. So here's a local Brazilian and also some international uh, media houses like Manga Bay. Um, OECO is the major partner with us on this. And so what we've done is we've made a, a custom embedding tool that you can select the specific data layers that you want. You can select stories or no stories. You can select sizes and it creates a custom code that you can then embed these things in your own website. So here's an example from Manga Bay where they took our deforestation layer and they decided they didn't want global forest type, which was that green information. They just want to look at roads and deforestation so they could customize it to help tell their story and support their story and also zoom in and choose like a custom uh, view. And then we've also released the story filtration systems. Like it's a, a WordPress uh, template that's now available for free and it's already being used. It's two weeks now uh, that it's been released and it's been picked up by a couple of different uh, publications. And the goal here with this is to figure out ways that we can um, make story display more intelligent and filter based upon interest and time. Um, and basically create these story APIs that can also be integrated into other projects uh, like the Global Forest Watch project that's also looking for, for information on that. So uh, thank you. Um, you can visit at uh, earthjournalism.net or InfoAmazonia is the website that I was showing primarily. And thank you.